In this video, we're going to take a look at an easy way to implement swipe events in an Android application. In our specific case, we're going to look at navigation from one screen to another. Now, why is this important? We have to keep in mind in Android that simple is better. We always want a simple user interface because people are going to be using this very small UI when they might be doing other things, when they might be distracted. We want to make it as few clicks as possible and as easy to use as possible. So everything that's on our screen, we have to interview and say, does this really add value? Right now, you see I have a menu up here, and I also have a Show Saved button here. And that Show Saved button will take me to another screen. But the trick is, that's another button that's, that's, that's on my view that's cluttering. So I want to get rid of that. And instead of clicking the button, I want to simply be able to swipe back and forth to go to another screen. So let's jump right into code. This screen is GPS a plant, so I'm going to put this in a presentation mode just a moment so we can see it in high definition. Okay, uh, in the onCreate method, we know that's going to get called when we uh, when the activity starts up. So just a moment, onCreate. Okay, there we go. What I'm going to do, I'm doing quite a bit in this method, I know, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new line, and I'm going to say uh, detector equals new gesture detector compat and I'm going to put this comma this. Now what is that? Okay, well I'm calling a constructor for this thing called gesture detector compat alt enter so we'll import that. The constructor takes two things, a context reference for the current activity which I pass in first and then also a listener that's going to subscribe to these different touch events that we have if it's a tap, a scroll, a fling, or whatever. Now I've declared a new object and I've saved it into this variable called detector, which I have not yet declared. So a simple uh, control alt F will create a new field out of this. Yeah, that's good. That declares the variable up above so that we'll be able to use it later on. Okay, so now I've created a new de uh, gesture uh, detector. We see the first argument is the context. The next one is an object that implements on gesture detected. It's kind of hard to see. I know it's flickering a bit. That's a, an object that's going to receive each of these gesture events. In our case, we want our current activity to receive those events. So I'm simply going to go up to the top of our activity where we have all of the interfaces that we are implementing. And of course, that list is getting pretty long right now. Uh, and I'm going to have this one implement gesture detector. Oh, uh, yeah, gesture detector is fine. And then we go ahead and do it like this. And then I'm going to say on uh, gesture listener. The reason why we want to do this is that on gesture listener isn't just looking for a press and an unpress. It's actually combining these things together and looking for things like a fling, where a fling is a down and a move event. So enter. Okay, it's going to redline because now I need to implement some interfaces. So alt enter implement methods. And for this specific on gesture listener, these are the different uh, different events we're going to respond to. We only need we, we need to implement all of these methods, but we only need to add behavior to the ones that we really care about, which in my case is going to be on fling. So I choose OK. And to my current activity, the one I've been editing throughout this entire video, it gives me an on fling method that's going to be invoked when the user does a fling in event. In other words, a down and a move. This very first motion event represents the down, uh, including the x and y coordinates of where that down was. This next mo motion event represent, represents the move that made up the fling. And that also has x and y coordinates. So if you want to uh, say, is it a right fling or a left fling, you can just compare the x and y coordinates from these two. OK, then velocity among the x-axis and velocity among the y-axis. We don't need to worry about each of those. Uh, we just, it, we're going to be very simple and just say if it's any fling of any kind, then we want to do the same logic that was in that show specimens method, which is a very simple, uh, just a moment, show saved, here we go, uh, a very simple redirection with an explicit intent that is within our current activity. Okay, so fling. So essentially, we're treating this fling like a button. Uh, this intent I created in a previous video. It's just saying, hey, go and open this screen. 
Now, finally, what's the return type here? You see it's a Boolean, and here we're saying false. That means, was this event consumed? In other words, should we pass this event on to other things, or should we say, we have handled this event? I'm going to return true, which says, I've handled this event. Okay, again, we could do on long press, on scroll, single tap, show, show press, down, so on and so forth, but we'll just leave them blank because those aren't ones that I'm concerned with at the moment. Now, one other part that's easy to miss, if you find that you're setting something like this up and it's not working, make sure you have overridden on touch event. So on touch event, there we go. Uh, what we're gonna do with on touch event is we have to tell our detector about it. So I'm gonna say detector, remember this guy? Remember when I did that Alt, uh, Control Alt F, I created that field at the very top because I said I wanted it to be visible throughout my entire class, and this is why. Because we need to tell the detector when a touch event has happened. So I'm gonna say detector, and then on touch event, and I'm simply gonna pass in the same parameter that was passed to this method. So I'm gonna say event, terminate with a semicolon, save, pause the video for a moment as I relaunch. Now the app has relaunched, I'm not going to click the Show Saved button. I'm simply going to click and drag, and we'll see that, sure enough, the touch event works, and it allows us to do navigation. Now, once again, I could get a little more complicated with this, and what would be really nice is to put a touch event on this next screen to allow me to move back, uh, back to the left again and go back to that initial screen. Um, we, we could do that with those X and Y coordinates. We'll leave that for an advanced video. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll be happy to dig into that. Um, but we see that now this is simple enough to use Fling to give the user a more natural interface and also a much more simplified interface as we need fewer buttons. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.